Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, great weekend we had, homecoming, uh, great crowd. crowd was phenomenal. Uh, hats off to them. They, they really helped us uh, on Saturday, and uh, our, our, our guys um, uh, really were focused and uh, fed off the crowd and got off to a great start. I thought that was really important for us to get off to the, to the great start. And, and then uh, um, just sustaining that, uh, uh, that level of play I thought was really important. And uh, I think in all three phases, we showed improvement in all three phases. We played well at different times. Uh, and uh, came out with a with a big win. Um, enjoyed it on on Saturday and, and, and part of Sunday. And, and now we got to flip the page. We've got the next one on the docket, and it's uh, Texas. And they're coming off of an open week. And I know they're I know they're extremely well coached. They've got great talent, but uh, uh, they'll have some things for us that we I'm sure haven't seen that uh, we'll have to adapt and adjust to. So. I'm excited about uh, uh, the week ahead. I'm excited because we get to play another home game. Um, to play back-to-back -back home games this late is great. I know we're going to have a, another great crowd. It's going to be a sellout again, um, which uh, I know our guys really appreciate. And uh, it's a night game, so it'll be uh, uh, under the lights. It'll be a lot of fun. We've got a lot of practice to go this week, but <clears throat> if, what are your thoughts as of now on who will start at quarterback? Um, we'll find out how the week goes. Uh, I don't have that answer now. I, I know that Adrian's closer. Um, I think you know Adrian and Daniel Green are the two that two major ones that missed. Um, and I and I know that Daniel Green's closer. And so um, nobody that played in the game on Saturday did we lose. And we're hopeful to have more guys back. Um, given the way Will's playing, does it change your mathematics on? The red shirt or not, and you need to have him probably available to play all the time. Well, it, it we still got to play that out um, based on Adrian's health, based on Will's health. Um, it, it does, uh, but you know it's easy to say, hey, we're gonna we're gonna shelve you, and then maybe something that happens to Adrian and Jake, and you got to pull it. Or Adrian's healthy, and you can you can hold him. You know, I, I've got a visit with Will about that. I, I know how Will feels. Um, for now, but I want to make sure he understands the future too. Um, but right now, he's the healthiest guy we have back there uh, of, of the two, and so uh, that's why he knows he's got to stay a viable candidate. Daniel's closer, and was, does the defense function any differently with Daniel out there as opposed to Nick, who played a really good game? No, it just um, it gives us more depth there, and we'll play both of them. Uh, where honestly, where it hurts us is to take Nick Allen off of special teams because he's one of our core guys that runs the show on special teams. He's one of our leading tacklers. He sets up the kick returns. He does everything. Uh, and when Daniel doesn't play, we have to protect Nick. And so that's the biggest thing is, uh, you know, though Nick will play more than he typically does, whether Daniel can play some or not, but it's just trying to make sure, hey, you're going to run down on kickoff or you're going to be on punt. Is Will playing so well right now that you have to consider playing him regardless of how Adrian's feeling? Um, you know, the, potentially, yeah. He's played a couple of, you know, he played a really good – Game at, at TCU um, uh, without taking the reps of the of the of the ones, and then uh, played really well on Saturday. So it's something that we're considering everything right now, uh, and, and we have to because we still have uh, a good grind of this season left, and and obviously the health is going to be the number one part of that. One more QB question, then I'll yeah. go somewhere else. But is is could you see platooning those guys if they were both good to go? Could you? It would be something that we would look at, but based on what we're trying to maybe do with Will, maybe not do with Will, I wouldn't want him to play 15 plays and lose a year. Well, you mentioned Texas coming off a bye week. Anytime you play somebody coming off a bye week, how much more research do you do kind of thinking, like you said, what they might yeah. throw at you that you haven't seen before? Well, um, you, you look at things that have hurt you both sides of the ball and say, okay, they've got to attack us here because this team did or – even though we didn't get hurt by this, boy, if I were somebody, and we, we look at that a lot, boy, if I were somebody, this is how I would attack us. And we have to think of it that way. 
and realize that they have a, a lot of good coaches um, and people behind the scenes that are looking at stuff all the time that we have to make sure and um, shore up the things that uh, we need to we know we've had issues with and then uh, as well as come up with new game uh, game plans but not reinvent the wheel we can't we've got to do what we do both sides of the ball still coach I want to ask you about two young guys Jake Clifton and Jacob Parrish played a lot of snaps on Saturday how much have they helped your team this season? Yeah, I'm glad you asked about both those guys. It was fun to see. Uh, let's hit Jacob Parrish first. We knew we were going to play him uh, all along uh, throughout the season on special teams and then uh, take some snaps at corner just to help us um, because Echo and Julius we knew. And we've got Omar Daniels and we've got some guys there, but we wanted to make sure that uh, – um, we had somebody ready to go, so we didn't have an issue with Jacob saying, boy, do we play him this game or not. Then we played him a little bit at nickel last week, um, in part because we knew we lost Khalid for a half, so we needed another player to play that position. So he's he's given us so much, and it's given some of those corners a break, and he's playing really well on special teams. Had a really good block on Phillips' uh, long return. Then Jake Clifton, early on in the season, he was one of those guys, well, we're going to play four games and, and probably not, not have him anymore. Then we lost some linebackers uh, off the roster that, that couldn't play anymore. Um, and through... Daniel Green's injury through Khalid's injury. It just we had so many guys getting nicked up that we just said, he's one of our best special teams guy. Let's play him. And then unfortunately, as, as I told you guys on Saturday, we lost Bo Palmer. So that moved him inside. And you say, well, you got Daniel Green back. Well, he's good enough to play all three spots. He could play the Sam Mike or Will. He's that smart of a kid, which is really rare for a freshman. Plus, he's playing well on special teams. And you guys saw on Saturday, he runs the football and tackles well, so he's gaining confidence. I want to ask you about the offensive line as well. Um, they seem to be playing at a really high level right now. Yeah, they really are. Uh, credit to those guys. Uh, credit to Coach Riley. Um, but I just see those five guys working together really well. That's a really good front from Oklahoma State, and, and I thought our guys uh, really r rose up and played well, and they're taking care of their bodies. We're trying to take care of them during the week because, um, you know, with TP down and stuff, we're not playing as many guys, and, and those five guys um, – are really carrying us right now offensively, and, and they kept uh, Will pretty clean and, and Deuce Rush for close to 160 yards. So um, uh, proud of those guys. Probably because he was targeted a little bit, so we saw it more. But was that one of the better gains we've seen from Echo Boydo? Uh, yeah, uh, you know he had a couple of PIs, and that's going to happen. I really have him play it aggressively, um, but I thought he played well, and they went after him and. He stood up to the challenge, and uh, it was fun to see for Echo, and uh, Echo wants to be challenged. And the way we play defense and, and as good as teams are rushing the football and quarterback run game and stuff, you guys see it as well when people play us. There's just a lot more man coverage out there. You just can't sit in soft zones all the time anymore, and so you're going to put a lot of pressure on your corners. That's why we're, we're fortunate to have the older guys we have at, in Echo and Juju. Since the beginning of Big 12 play? Is there a player or a position group that jumps out to you that's probably improved the most for your team? Uh, you know, there's a lot of people playing really well. I, I go back to that offensive line. The consistency of the offensive line uh, is, is where you got to look at. And then uh, just the amount of guys we're playing on the defensive line is keeping Felix and keeping Nate and Mott and Eli and all those guys pick, all those guys healthy because they're not having to play 45, 55 plays a game. They're in that 20 to 30 play a game because we're rotating so many guys. And so just our depth there is really helping us. And B. John Robinson, <coughs> quite a talent in the backfield. What's I guess what's the hardest part about stopping him? The, the fact you're going to have some one-on-one -on -one tackles and you, you need to have more people to the to the ball carrier. You need to find ways to vice tackle him, which is hard because then you're going to be one-on-one -on -one with the wide receiver or, or tight end, and um, you know it's just. Uh, We've got to do a great job of gang tackling, and you can't give up on the play. You can't think, well, this guy's probably got him because he might not. And uh, he's a really special player, great talent. And uh, I think if there's one thing I'd say just watching Texas, they do as good a job as anybody that we've played as far as we're getting our best players the football, and we're going to make sure that you have to defend our best players for four quarters from sideline to sideline, whether it's the wide receiver to the tight end to, to the running back, um, getting touches everywhere.
given the trajectory of a college football season, how much can Saturday kind of be a launching point for you guys? Uh, I'm careful about that. I mean, sure, you gain some confidence from it, but we've got to stay humble from it um, because um, – you know everything clicked. There's no question. Everything clicked on Saturday, and that's that's the confidence part of it. But now we got to wipe that one away because this is the next game, and it's the next one week season we have against another really good team. And and um, those things just don't ever happen in college football. And we were part of it, and it did. But uh, now we've got to move forward and uh, realize that. You know we still left some plays out there. We have more growth to make. Uh, you you always gain confidence when you have growth. We did some better things on special teams. We were able to pop a couple of punt, re, uh, punt returns. I thought Ty Zentner played his best game. I thought Ty kicked the ball extremely well. Then we had him kicking field goals, and and so there was more stress on him, but he he rose up. and um, So, yeah, it gains you, gives you confidence, but in the same respect, you got to stay humble as well because you know it's not going to be like that very often. And you alluded to this, but given Texas power rush, how much can the TCU film and kind of a few mistakes you guys made, can you learn from that? Absolutely. If we don't tackle well, it's going to be the same kind of day. Uh, and uh, the backs are, are very similar, uh, if not uh, as good, better. Um, because And there's multiple backs, too, that, that are going to come at you. And so for us, it, it comes down to getting off blocks and running our feet on contact and, and uh, tackling and making sure a, a three-yard gain doesn't go for eight because then we are behind the sticks all game long and then it's a bad deal for us. And, um, yeah, if I'm watching – if I'm them, I'm watching the TCU game, I'd be looking at my chops too saying, we're going to run the football at these guys. And you talked about Echo, but just the secondary as a whole, how well they've played for a few games. Yeah, we're playing a lot of guys there. Uh, I know we're, we're playing uh, – Four corners played and and uh, six safeties played, so that's great to to play that many guys. Uh, it keeps guys fresh. It keeps guys engaged. All those guys are playing somewhere on special teams as well. Uh, and uh, they're you know the younger guys are getting better. The VJ Paynes are getting better. Uh, and you know to get a Crew Jackson to make some plays and and on special teams, Crew's doing a nice job. We're we're getting some mileage out of people. See, Toby made a big tackle on kickoff. We're we're getting some mileage out of some guys because of the hard work they've put in throughout the fall. Coach, tonight you're probably going to be ranked in the college football playoff initial poll. Obviously, it doesn't mean a whole lot yeah. right now. But what does that do for recruiting to be able to go out and sell that to recruits? Uh, I'm sure it's it's good. I'll let the recruiting staff handle that. Uh, it, uh, it it's something that somebody will tell me uh, that we're ranked somewhere. Um, it uh, really matters at the end. You know, whoever the top four teams are, they'll talk about that a bunch. But there's so much football left to be played uh, inside that top 25 and even outside of it that uh, you're just trying to focus on the things that you can control. And, and for us, it's um, not getting caught up in that. You know, that'd be the easy thing if caught up with where you're at. And as soon as you start thinking about that, you're going to get beat. And, and um, we need to keep focus on ourselves and getting better. From a recruiting momentum standpoint, have you noticed a better reception based off the type of season that you guys have had on the recruiting trail lately? You know, I don't know if it's that. I really don't, other than the fact that, um, you know, we have so many more prospects and families come to campus for games uh, this year. And part of it is our atmosphere has been really good. I think we've sold out every game. Uh, so a lot of people want to be a part of that. I think people are feeling better about traveling now too uh, with the pandemic being over. I didn't see many as many families out in 2021 uh, as you are in 2022. So uh, that's a big part of it. Uh, you hope the success helps as well. Um, we've got to keep utilizing the success that we've had uh, but uh, once again, we're still uh, a long ways to go. But uh, it's been it's been good game day environments here for the young men and their families that have come. What kind of <clears throat> excuse me, What kind of challenges does Quinn Ewers bring? Um, one, we don't have a ton of film on him. You know, he's, he was he was banged up a little bit. Um, he's a very calm. Uh, demeanor guy it looks like in the pocket doesn't look like he gets uh, rattled um, he's you can tell he's in control and uh, knows where he's got to get the football to into his playmakers hands uh, I think he's had a really good season um, and once again having a week off every one of their guys will be feeling a little bit healthier uh, and uh, I, I think he's a 
a perfect fit for their offense because they have so many people that can beat you. And he's understanding that I got to get all these guys the ball, and he does. And one of those guys that can beat you is Xavier, Xavier Worthy. How yeah. how talented is he? He can roll. Boy, he can really run, and um, he goes up and attacks the football. And uh, you know, it, it's one thing you can't do is you can't kind of emulate him at practice because we're just not running that fast. We got some guys that can run, but not like that. Uh, and, and we're gonna we're gonna be challenged on some deep balls. Uh, we were last week. We're definitely going to be this week, and we need to know where he's at because he could be running post routes. He could be running diagonals across the field. They're gonna get him the ball uh, on little smoke screens and stuff. Uh, that once he's one of those guys that they're gonna find their way to get touches to him. I got a Deuce Vaughn question for you. Oh, that's I, I like to hear this. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Okay. He's very close he's very close to becoming number two all time in rushing, only behind Darren Sproles. I've heard of him. Yes. <laughs> when you when you think of Deuce, I mean just what comes to mind? A complete football player. You know? And just as he's evolved through his three years here, which is hard to believe it's only been three years, um, from when he first got here and nobody knew much about him to he's kind of a scat back and you catch it out of the backfield. And, and then all of a sudden we talked about him being, hey, man, he's a complete runner. He can run inside, he can run outside, and he can catch the ball. And then you see what he's done in the pass protection as well as lead blocks. And he's become a complete football player. And I think that's the, the thing that excites him the most is – that people see him as a complete player because of um, blocks that he's made and people talking about it, and uh, he, as well as he's one of the greatest teammates. You know, when somebody's down, he's one of the first guys to go up there and, and try to raise their spirits. And uh, he's a very humble guy, and he's one that uh, even though he had 160 yards or whatever, he's not going to say, "Boy, I, I've arrived." That, that kid's always going to work hard and stay humble. Another uh, guy that you like, Gilly. Yeah. How have you seen him make strides this year? Um, confidence in Gilly uh, with each snap. You know, he hadn't played very much coming into this year. Uh, and I just have seen him grow because he's learning so much about the game. The more snaps you take, the more and more you learn about not just your position, but he knows what everybody's doing on that front. And that's cool for, for us because we have a really a quarterback of the offensive line. Uh, he'd love that I, that I called him a quarterback. Quarterback of the offensive line that uh, is making all the calls and uh, is very confident in what he's doing. And uh, he's getting stronger as the year has gone on. One final one. Um, after the game, you described the defense as being phenomenal. And every game this season, you've held opponents underneath their season scoring average. What's making the defense so good this year? Well, we're playing faster as the as it's gone on. Um, you know, I, I you always got to be careful because I didn't think we played as well uh, on defense against TCU. You know, so even though we're, you know, we, I say that we talk about it. I think some of those kids, I know some of those kids on defense had a chip on their shoulder on Saturday because I don't think they felt like they played to the their capabilities and the best of their ability against TCU the week before, and that's what it comes down to again is. Whatever happened last Saturday means nothing compared to what's going to happen for your preparation this week to get to next Saturday because it's just now we're down to four one-week seasons. You mentioned Ty Zentner. I wanted to ask, uh, one, is it fair to assume that he's going to continue kicking field goals for now? And then on the second side of that, is it rare to see a, a kicker or a punter with that much kind of personality and swagger on and off the field? Well, not Ty. He's got tons of swagger and personality. So uh, I, I like it, though. He's confident. And uh, – He's one of the best athletes on the team. You know, so is Tennant, one of the best athletes on the team. So is Jack Bloomer, one of the best athletes on the team. I won't say Randon, um, but but those three guys are some of the best athletes on the team. Uh, Randon's going to love that. Um, but yeah, it's he will continue to kick field goals as long as he can still handle the things. Um, you know, we dealt with a little bit uh, of a of a a leg issue with Chris last week, so I don't know if he could have last week. We kind of shelved him a little bit late in the week. Um, we'll see how he bounces back this week. If it's a longer field goal, Chris probably would go in there uh, based on his health. But, uh, um, you know, Ty's a confident guy in everything that he does. And so uh, I was excited that uh, he kicked. I thought his kickoffs were phenomenal on, on Saturday. You know, there was just a little bit of win, and he hung it up there forever, or he banged it out by 10 yards. And then he was – that led to his confidence kicking field goals. Phoebe put a poll on Twitter asking if – 
uh, a team of all Cooper BBs or a team of all Cade Warners would win a football game. I want yeah, to we've had this conversation. It wouldn't be close for Beebs. I, I hate to say it. I think Cade would probably get him. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'd take a, a team of random Platners before I'd take a team of any of those guys. Uh, Deuce, the last last few weeks, it seems like, has been more involved in the in the past game. Is that more a product of will being in there or is it uh, a conscious effort or no I, some teams take it just play him so differently you know with doubling him there's been some teams early in the season that have really doubled him and taken him out of the pass game by high low on him or bracketing him inside and outside uh and, and so uh, other guys have had the ability to make plays and then the more we've stretched the ball downfield uh, the more it loosens people up because we've hit some seam routes. And so when you do that, then the underneath becomes a little bit more open. Uh, and so it's just more of a product of, of uh, what defenses are giving us. Also, uh, you faced a pretty different Texas offense last year with, I think the quarterback was out yeah. and Bijan was out. Can you take anything from that at all? Or is it Yeah, well, we got to be prepared for Wildcat. They beat us in Wildcat. Uh, up, they beat us up pretty good in Wildcat. They ran a bunch of unbalanced sets. They got us in. We've got to make sure that we um, have some good answers to, to a couple of things. that They, they know what they did to, to beat us last year. That was, it was no surprise that uh, uh, they found a weakness and, uh, and, and attacked us and exposed us. And we have to be able to shore that up. And uh, now... I don't think they're going to sit in those things all game long because they have so many more people that are capable of making plays. But if we can't stop it, they will. And also, uh, in the past, when you guys have been ranked, it's been kind of a fleeting thing. You guys have sustained it pretty well now. Are you been pretty happy with the way the guys have handled? Success? Yeah, and we don't really talk about it. I don't think our kids have ever in a team meeting uh, have talked about rankings or something. You might ask those guys because we don't ever talk about it as a staff or with the guys of where that stuff is at. I know they know, um, but uh, right now it's control what you can control and, and a preseason ranking really means nothing until the end of the season. I'm one of the voters on the AFCA coaches poll, and I look at my vote that I have on August 3rd, and I kind of laugh at myself because I, I obviously uh, was wrong on a number of teams. So it uh, you got to play the whole season out. One play I wanted to ask you about from the other day that um, seemed very well blocked from the press box was Deuce Fawn's cutback touchdown run. Um, offensive line yeah, opened they, up. Qu they, quite a hole there. Can you break that one down for yeah, us? Yeah, they did a great job. Uh, of it, uh, we kicked people out and then led through, and uh, they had one kid f probably make the wrong read on a gap, uh, but we got great displacement at the line of scrimmage. It was all five guys did a great job uh, up front, and we sealed it, uh, and then Deuce cut it back, and um, we had a nice funnel for him, and um, it, like I said, they had one kid, I think, hit the wrong gap, and then Deuce was off to the races, which was good to see uh, in, in the fact of, I thought Deuce was and is continuing to get healthier, you know, to be able to, to run away. Um, you know, he'd been banged up a little bit as well, and I thought uh, uh, he was he looked a lot more fresh on Saturday. I also wanted to ask um, Bo Palmer. I know it's unfortunate he's not yeah. going to get to play anymore, but uh, just how bad a timing is that that he went down right as, you know, his opportunity? Isn't that awful? I, I, I just was so sick for the kid. I saw him the next day. He came to practice, gave him a hug. And I'm like, Bo, because we sat here and told him, Bo, you're going to get to play some Mike Backer this week. And I know his high school coach really well, Alan Terrell. And um, it just it makes you so sad because – kid has worked his tail off for the moment and he had a moment against TCU but he didn't take many reps during the week took some but not and then he knew he was going to get a chance to play because we weren't going to play Nick 80 90 snaps if that were what it was going to be and then he has a freak injury like that and uh, Bo will bounce back I know he will I don't know when his surgery is I think it's coming up pretty soon because it wasn't a whole lot of swelling um, and, and he'll bounce back it's not often that you get to add a, a, a coach like Gary Patterson to your to your staff. Have you, especially being familiar with him, playing him a couple times, have you noticed any impact that, that he's had on their defense? Um, I don't know. I, I, that's a hard one for me to answer. Um, I'm assuming he has had a huge impact. Um, you know, maybe a better question for our offensive coaches that sit in there all the time and watch it, and I'm watching some of them and some on the other side of the ball. I, we all know Gary's one of the – uh, legends in the game and is a great college coach and 
Um, for Texas to have him as an analyst is a big benefit, and so I'm sure he's helping them out. <laughs> Coach, I want to ask you <clears throat> excuse me, about that moment um, when Adrian comes into the locker room, talks to you and Coach Klein, and says he's not 100% healthy. Um, I guess what kind of a teammate does it take for, to be able to do that, to tell you yeah. then Will gets his opportunity? Yeah, uh, it's – it's the relationship that those guys have, meaning those two, as well as Coach Klein in that quarterback room, that we all want to win. And um, it was a pretty simple thing that he didn't feel like he uh, was 100%. He'd go, but he wasn't 100%. And that answered my question for me. Um, but I'm going to take it one further. Uh, Daniel Green was trying to play. He went through warm-ups in, in the weight room and trying to do some stuff, trying to give 15 plays for Nick Allen uh, so that Nick could get a rest because we didn't know what Jake could do. And only only concern Daniel Green had was, I don't want to hurt my team. I don't want to hurt my team if I can't play to my capabilities for 15 plays. And after the warm-ups, he knew he couldn't. He said, all I'll do is hurt the team. And that's, that's a sign of a pretty healthy locker room of guys that care about each other, that want to make sure that the team is successful over themselves.